Hello everyone, welcome to this tip from Drones in School. Uh, we have a lot of our teams now are starting to use our, our Tiny Hawk 3 platform, which you'll see here on the screen, or you can see it right here on the screen as well. And as they're starting to do that, we're, we're getting requests from some of our advisors that are saying, hey, this thing's a little bit too, too much for some of our new pilots. Is there a way to kind of tune it down? So we're going to talk about a little bit of that today. Before we start, one request we get quite a bit is uh, turning off the air mode. So when you turn your drone on, you plug in your battery, right? And then you arm your drone. Okay, the props will start to, to spin, letting you know that it's armed. And this is great, but for a new pilot that doesn't really know how to, to disarm when they're trying to land, it can be a little bit confusing a little bit difficult so we're gonna first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shut off that air mode to show you how to disable that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and plug into beta flight I'll bring that up here on the screen so once we're in beta flight we're gonna go into our configuration so in configuration uh, we're gonna scroll down here a little bit and we're gonna turn off air mode and you would think that would handle it, right? But not quite. So we're going to go ahead and save and reboot. That's step one. So that turns off the air mode, but we need to do one more thing so it doesn't spin those motors. We need to go into the motor tab and we need to turn on motor stop, which says don't spin the motors when armed. So we have to do both those steps to get this to work. So I'm going to go ahead and save and reboot that as well. Once that comes back up, We'll unplug from beta flight and we will plug in our batteries. We can show you what that looks like now. So now when I go ahead and take my drone and I arm it, and wait for it to go through its boot sequence here and we're all set. When I'm armed, nothing happens, but when I throttle up, now I get some throttle. And when I bring the throttle down, it'll stop so I can actually land the drone which makes that a little more convenient for most of our new pilots again you probably want to turn that back on when you go to race because it's really nice to be able to arm and then know that when you see those props moving you know that you're ready to go so uh, you'll probably want to you know turn back the air mode and turn on the uh, turn off the motor stop but when you're just starting out that could be a nice thing to have all right, so let's get into the next part here of what people want to know, and that is to kind of bring down the speed and the sensitivity of this drone to make it maybe a little more manageable uh, for a new pilot, so it's not quite so hot out of the box as it is with the, the factory tune. So let's talk about how we can do that. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug our drone again back into beta flight. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. There we go. All right. So we're going to be looking at our PID tuning. Now, we're not going to really be doing much with the PIDs uh, themselves, but we're going to be looking more at the rates. So we're going to look at our rate here. Now, this is a default rate. Yours may be a little different than mine. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my transmitter here so you can see what's going on. Uh, what this shows is this is our current rate. So it's, it's how, uh, how quickly the drone is turning on that axis. And we have our roll, our pitch, and our yaw. So I take my roll stick and I move that stick. You can see here, I'll bring it back a little bit so you can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, when I start to move that roll, you'll see it starts moving like 25 degrees per second, then 50 degrees per second, then 100 degrees per second, then 200, then 300, then 400, then 5, then 6, 6, 6, 67 is the degrees per second, which is the maximum I can do as I'm rolling to the right. I can roll to the left. And that's going to go the other direction. You'll see that little dot on the screen go back and forth. And you'll see my drone moving around. And I've got those uh, for each of my axis, my roll, pitch, and yaw. So that allows me to, to set what those are. Now, this out of the box, you can see with the curve, you, you start to get a slight movement. And then as you get out to the edge of your stick movement, that starts to really spike up. Now, this is great. If you're drone racing, so if I need to get that motion, I can move my stick and I'm going to get more and more speed on that turn. Now, for a beginner, it could be a little bit much. It's a little, maybe a little too touchy. 
So let's see how we can make adjustments on that. I watched a, a video on from Joshua Barbell, kind of showed me a little bit of this. Great place to look for things if you're uh, interested in learning more. I'm going to go in here and we're going to look at actual. So I'm going to go ahead and reset. It's going to change it to the default, which is fine for what I'm going to do. And this, when I change to actual, there's all kinds of different rate types. Beta flight is what it defaults with, but you can have different ones you can try. Uh, again, we're going to go to actual right now for this video. So now we see our center sensitivity is at 200, and then my max rate is at 670, and my expo is at 0.54. Now that still gives me a 670 degrees per second out at the top and bottom of my sticks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and zero out our max rate and my expo on each of my axes. Okay, so now for roll pitch and yaw, I have 200 and zero. So now you'll see that I have 200 for my max and minimum, uh, and it's a linear motion. So now when I move my stick, it's going to go up evenly throughout the entire range of motion for my stick. And now when I get to the edge, I'm going to have a lot less motion. All right, it's going to be a lot softer. It might be too soft. You know, if uh, for when I'm racing, so I may want to, you know, change that back later on. But for now, that's a, a nice, easy motion, and that will give me a lot more soft control. And uh, for those that, you know, when you're when you're brand new and you just start to move the stick a little bit, and then boom, it starts going crazy. That 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 can help because now I'm going to have a lot more movement of my stick before I start to see that faster degrees per second uh, in, in the rate change. So that's one thing I can do. Uh, another thing you can do is kind of bring your, your throttle down. You can see I've already done it on here, but yours will be set to 100 and it's probably set to off, okay? So that means for my throttle, I have a full range from you know zero to 100% throttle. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna add a throttle limit of 70%. Now there's two kind of throttle limits I can do. I can do a scaled limit or I can do a clipped limit. If I do a scaled limit, what's going to happen is when I go up to the top, I'm going to have I'm going to be at 70%. What that's going to do is when I actually go to fly the drone, when I get to the top, it's really going to be 70% at the top and not the full 100%. The other thing I can do is I can do what's called a clip now, on a clipped throttle limit, when I take the stick up, I'm going to get from zero throttle up to 70%, and then from 70% on, nothing's going to change. So I'm not going to get that. This at the top is not going to really be any difference. I really prefer scaled. Uh, when I start to mess with throttle limits, I think it just makes it easier. Uh, so I know that uh, my full throttle you know, is going to be reduced to 70%. Now, 70% is a good place to start. Feel free to experiment with this with your students. You can bring that down to 50%, maybe even 40%, and still get the drone in the air. It might only come up and just kind of hover and kind of want to bounce a little bit. So if it's, it's real close, you might want to increase it a little bit there. 70% will let you fly pretty much as normal. You just won't have that high top end. A lot of times students that are just learning, they want to throw the throttle all the way up and smash it in the ceiling. This will eliminate some of that for you. Uh, and make it a little bit softer throttle to, to learn with. Now, again, I cannot stress enough that these changes are going to be detrimental to a, uh, a pilot as you develop. So as your students get faster and faster and better, you're going to want to undo some of these changes that softened and kind of made that a little more of a docile aircraft because they're going to want that extra power. They're going to want those faster responses when they get into being a little more competitive drone racers. But to get started, this is a good place to be. So hope that helps and enjoy your racing.